Hey crafty friends, my name is Misty. Welcome to my channel, Gleesman Designs. In today's video, I combined 20 viewer favorite DIY projects all in one video. So let's get crafting and jump right in. For this DIY, I'm using some of the bamboo rings from Dollar Tree and they do come two in a pack with a larger one and a smaller one. I'm actually going to use three packs of these and I start off by separating the size, the smaller ones and the larger ones. And then I only grab two of the larger ones for now. I set the third one off to the side and I'm going to use some wood glue and go all the way around the top of one of the rings. And you can get wood glue at Dollar Tree as well. And then I just take the second ring and place it right on top. Then I take two of the smaller rings and I do the exact same thing, adding some hot glue going all the way around the ring and then gluing those two rings together. So again, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I love these bamboo sticks. I use them all the time in my videos, in almost every one of my videos. They come in handy so much, and I always have a link down below in the description box for these as well. So all I'm going to do is take one of the bamboo sticks, and I'm going to add a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, and hot glue it, well, glue it right to the inside of the ring. I did use one of the little Dollar Tree clips just to hold it in place, but I did find that you definitely don't need to do that, so I didn't do that with the rest of them. So all I did was take the bamboo sticks and I glued them north, south, east, and west onto the bamboo ring. Once I had those four bamboo sticks in place, I took the other four and I just started gluing them right in between those original four bamboo sticks. Oh my gosh, you guys, I feel like I'm going to say bamboo sticks a hundred times. So anyways, after you take your sticks and you glue them in between the original four, you will have eight total. Once all the sticks are in place, I'm going to take the third bamboo ring and I just kind of slide it over top of all of those bamboo sticks. And I do kind of stop right at the top of the sticks and then I take some of those Dollar Tree clips and kind of just clip them in place so that it holds it all together. Then I just take my hot glue gun and I kind of pull the bamboo stick away from the ring, add some hot glue onto either the ring or the bamboo stick, and then I glue those two together. Then I just repeated the same step to all of the other bamboo sticks, hot gluing them right to that top ring so that we have this really neat looking lantern. And here's how the lantern should look so far. We do still need to put the bottom on it, but this is how it should definitely look at this point. Now for the smaller lantern, I'm going to do the pretty much the same exact steps, but I do cut down the bamboo sticks to 11 inches and they were previously 15 inches. I am sorry I did not mention that earlier, but then I use my Dollar Tree garden shears to cut them down. They cut super easy with those Dollar Tree garden shears. And then I did the exact same thing, doing the north, south, east, west, and then gluing the bamboo sticks in between those as well until I had eight going all the way around. And then I take that third smaller ring from Dollar Tree and I place it right on top like I did the first lantern. And again, just going around up here at the top, pushing those bamboo sticks out a little bit, adding some hot glue, and then gluing them to that bamboo ring. And once you have that done, your little lantern should look like this at this point. Now for the bottoms of the lanterns, you could very easily trace out the circle on some Dollar Tree foam board and you could save $1.25 instead of buying two separate items like I did, but I wanted my items to, well my, up, my bottoms, to be wood just like the rest of the lantern. So all I did was go ahead and use this wood sign from Dollar Tree and I tried using my Cricut weeding tool at first, but I did forget to heat this up you guys. So if you use a heat gun or even a blow dryer, it will loosen up the glue and then you can use like a Cricut scraping tool and it will most likely come off all in one piece. I then take a piece of sandpaper and sand it down so that it is all nice and smooth. Since we do not need the twine hanger, I went ahead and cut it off and then filled in the hole with some Dollar Tree spackling. And now that the bottom to our larger lantern is prepped, we're going to move on to the bottom to the smaller lantern. 
I'm using this wood round that I got from Walmart for under a dollar and I'm just going to paint it white with my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I also paint the larger bottom the same color as well as both of the lanterns. Once everything was painted and all dry, I started out with the larger lantern and I added some wood glue going all the way around the bottom and I added a little bit of hot glue for an immediate hold as well and then I just placed it right in the center of that white wood round. Once the larger lantern was done, I did the exact same steps with the smaller lantern, adding some wood glue and hot glue and then placing it right in the center of that wood round that I got from Walmart. At this point, you could leave your lanterns just as is, but Dollar Tree has came out with so many new greenery garlands that I am literally obsessed with them, and they have them in so many different colors of green, well, shades of green, and so many different styles of leaves as well. So what I'm going to do with the garland that I choose, you can do with any of these or any other garland that you may have. This one here is my absolute favorite. I almost used this one but I really really like this vine garland that has ivory on it. I think it is just so pretty and really high-end looking. This vine is also from Dollar Tree as well so you really do have so many different options if you would like to take this route as well. I cut off a small piece up here at the top just because I wanted a leaf a little bit closer to the top and it did have quite a bit of space without any leaves so I did have to hot glue those back together and all I did was kind of hook it around the top bamboo ring. These garlands are wired so I think that is pretty neat um, and when I say these garlands I mean the ivory vine garlands the other garlands that I showed you from Dollar Tree are not wired but all I did was just kind of attach it up at the top and then I spiraled it down one of those bamboo sticks and I did cut off a little bit of the excess down at the bottom just because I didn't want so much down inside the lantern with the larger one, I did not have to cut any off. I was able to just wrap it around the bottom of the lantern like I'm doing here, and it actually fit perfect. And then all I do is add a little bit of hot glue to kind of keep that in place. Now it will stay in place if you don't want to add the hot glue so that maybe you can change the florals or the greenery or the garland whatever out. So you can definitely leave that up to you. That is personal preference whether you want to kind of glue these garlands down so that they stay in place. And once you have that done, this is how it should look and I am in love. I think they are so gorgeous. For this DIY, you will need a pack and just a few of another pack, so technically two packs of the Tumbling Tower Blocks from Dollar Tree. For the bottom of the Wishing Well, I'm going to use one of the white foam boards from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place the Tumbling Tower Blocks in an octagon shape and then I take my pencil and I mark all the way around each one of the little Tumbling Tower Blocks so that I have a circle shape that I can cut out. Once you have your circle piece of foam board cut out, now you're going to take the tumbling tower blocks again and add some hot glue and place them right back in that octagon shape right onto the foam board. Once you have the first octagon shape down, you're going to start with the second one and when you add your tumbling tower blocks, you want to place the center of the tumbling tower block on the little gap that is on the previous tumbling tower block octagon shape. 
It's a little hard to explain, but you guys can definitely see what I'm doing. And all I'm doing is placing the tumbling tower blocks again into an octagon shape. And you're going to do as many of these as you would like. This is going to be the walls on your wishing well. Now I'm going to take six of the tumbling tower blocks and glue two of them together, creating three sets of two. You will repeat this process two times so that you will have six two sets of blocks. Then take the six sets of two blocks and you're going to glue three of those two sets together, making two longer pieces. Now I take four of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue two of them going long ways and I do the same with the other two as well. Once you have those two pieces completed, add some hot glue down at the bottom and then you're going to glue that smaller piece onto the bigger pieces that we made right in the center at the top. And I do the exact same thing with the other two pieces, gluing the smaller one in the center up at the top. These are going to be the sidewalls to our wishing well. So now I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue onto the bottom of the side piece and then glue it to the top part of the wishing well. And of course I do the exact same thing with the second piece and that is gluing it to the top side of the wishing well. For the roof, I'm going to use these huge jumbo craft sticks that I got at Walmart. These are amazing to work with. They cut super, super easy. And like I said, they are absolutely huge. I'm going to simply cut them in half. They are 10 inches long. So just cut them in half at the five inch mark and you will have it perfectly cut in half. I cut five of the jumbo popsicle sticks in half and then I take one and just cut it down to where it is just two little pieces and you'll see why here in a second. It does not have to be perfect. You just want smaller pieces that you can glue down onto your roof. Take the five craft sticks that you cut in half and place them nice and even in one straight line and then you're going to take that small little piece of the craft stick that we cut down and you're going to add some hot glue onto the back and place it onto the larger craft sticks, keeping them together. And I did add two of these little cut down pieces to both of the rooftop parts. And again, you are going to want to make two of these, one for each side of your wishing well. Before I add my roof on, I wanted to have a little bit more of a surface to adhere to. So I take two more of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue them horizontally at the top of both of the side pieces. Using my hot glue gun, I add a decent amount of hot glue at the top part of the rooftop and I do this on both of the rooftop pieces right away because you're going to kind of glue them together as well. So now just take them and place them right onto the tumbling tower blocks, making sure that they are at a peak. This next step again is definitely personal preference. I wanted the rooftop to have a little bit better of a finish. So I'm using these bamboo sticks that I got off of Amazon. They are in my Amazon store. I will definitely have them linked down below. And I just cut them down, add some hot glue and place one on either side of the rooftop. And I feel like this really gives it so much more of a finished look. For the handle, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree dowel rod. You could also get dowel rods from Walmart for much cheaper now, but all I'm going to do is cut it at seven and a half inches, and these are really easy to cut. I just kind of score it with my scissors a few times, going and like spinning it around as I kind of score it, and then it will just kind of break in half, and sometimes you can just bend them in half, but they are very easy to cut. I sanded it down so that there wasn't any sharp jagged pieces and then I take another piece and I cut it down at two inches and then I also cut one at one inch so you're going to want a seven and a half inch piece a two inch piece and a one inch piece and again use your sandpaper to make them nice and smooth Now you're going to want to kind of hold the seven and a half inch piece horizontally in your hand, add a dab of hot glue on the very end, then take the two inch piece and you're going to glue that vertically onto the horizontal seven and a half inch piece. Again, it's easier to watch than to explain. 
And now I'm just adding a dab of hot glue on the bottom of the two inch piece. And then I'm going to glue the one inch piece horizontally on the vertical two inch piece. So you have a horizontal seven inch piece, a vertical two inch piece, and then a horizontal one inch piece. And once you have all of the three pieces glued together, you have this super cute, perfect little handle. Now you can paint or stain whatever you would like to do. I went ahead and spray painted mine. I'm sorry I didn't put that in the video, but it was super, super cold. And to be honest, I just didn't want to be out there freezing my butt off trying to film as I'm spray painting it. So next I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue onto the handle. And then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Dew Twine again, glue it down to the handle and then wrap it around that handle part as many times as you would like. Again, this is also personal preference. I wrapped mine quite a few times so that I had a little bit gathered up at the top of the handle. Once you are done wrapping the twine around your handle, again, as much as you would like, make sure that you leave a decent amount hanging when you cut it off so that you can tie it to your bucket when you're ready. And speaking of buckets, again, I'm going to use those little white buckets from Dollar Tree. I love the fact that they come in a three pack and they are just so useful, but I wanted to make it just a little bit more, I guess stand out a little bit more because it was also white. So I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Jew Twine and I just wrap it around the bucket a few times. You could also paint the bucket or use a different bucket if you would like, but once you're done wrapping the twine, cut off the excess, hot glue it down, and here's how the bucket will look once you are done. Now with the excess twine that you left hanging on the wishing well handle, you're going to simply tie it right to the bucket handle nice and tight. Cut off any of the excess and look how cute this is already turning out. I am loving this DIY. When it comes to attaching the handle, I used my glue gun and I placed a little bit of hot glue right where those edges are on the two blocks and where the one block meets. And then I just take my little handle and place it right on top of that hot glue. I thought that my bucket was just a little bit too low, so I hurried up and twisted it around so that it was up a little bit higher and then add whatever florals or succulents you would like. I did succulents and here's how this DIY turned out. I think this DIY turned out so stinking cute. I absolutely love that this could be used for all year round decor. You could definitely change out the decor or the florals for each season or each holiday. For this next DIY, I bought two books from Dollar Tree. However, what you want to do is make sure that when you remove the cover, it has a hard white cover to it. So as you can see, once I remove this cover, the entire book is white. If you would like a different color, that is completely fine. But I just wanted to make sure that both of mine were completely white once I removed the covers. So I'm sure most of you guys know Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, absolutely great person, wonderful crafter. And she uses these IOD products all of the time and I've really loved their molds when I see her use them. So I decided to click on her link under her video and I bought some of the molds as well. And let me tell you guys, they did not disappoint. So Sammy, thank you so much. I was going to use air dry clay, but then I decided to go ahead and use some resin. So I bought this resin off of Amazon. I will have the link down below in the description box. I also bought the resin kit, the resin mix mixing kit that comes with this, these little cups and stirring things and all kinds of stuff that you would need. So I mix a one-to-one -one ratio of A and B, and then I take my little mixer, my resin mixer that I also got off of Amazon. I will also have that link down below for you guys. And I mix it for a long time, even though I fast forwarded it for you guys. And then you're just going to take the resin and pour it right into your molds. You guys, this was my very, very first time doing this and it was so easy. I might have overfilled my mold just a little bit, so therefore it wasn't completely flat on the back, but again, it was super easy and actually quite satisfying to make. 
If you have any air bubbles, from what I was told, using a heat gun or a hair blow dryer and just blowing at the mold real quickly will help those bubbles completely disappear. I let my molds dry overnight and you guys look how perfect these came out and this was so satisfying to get them out of the mold. I could do this all day long. I mean, I think these turned out perfect and I love that there's a little bit of flexibility to them and look how gorgeous the detail is. I definitely know I will be buying more of these IOD molds, that's for sure. Next, I'm going to take my book stack and I'm just going to grab the pieces from the mold. I have no idea what they're called, you guys. Like I said, I'm so new to this whole mold thing. But anyways, I'm going to add the piece to the spine of the book by adding it using some hot glue. And the glue sticks that I'm using and personally love to use is the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. I will have those linked down below in the description box and a kind of a set where it comes with the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and the Gorilla Glue glue gun. Holy moly, that is crazy. Anyways, the links for the glue sticks and the glue gun will be down in the description box down below if you guys would like to check them out. I then took the second sign of the mold and glued it onto the spine of the book just like I did with the previous one. The reason why I chose the white for my books is because I'm going to take the books outside and spray paint just the spine with this linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I am so obsessed with how they turned out. I am personally totally digging the all white really clean look but you are more than welcome to de-stress these if you would like. For this DIY, I found this orange plastic bucket at Dollar Tree and I really like how it really reminds me of a wicker look on the outside. So that's kind of where I'm going to go with this project. Wicker really kind of reminds me of my grandmother so it has like a little special spot in my heart. So all I did was use some white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and add a little bit of baking soda. Honestly, there really isn't any measurement here. You just kind of go off how thick you would like it. And you guys, look at that coverage. I mean, it's amazing. I love using this paint technique. It just really, you only usually have to do like one or two coats instead of like with normal paint, you have to do several coats. So I just absolutely love this technique. I do also recommend using a bristled paintbrush just so it gets down into the creases a little bit better and all I did was go ahead and paint the entire bucket with the baking soda and white rust-oleum chalk paint mixture. Once I had the bucket fully painted, I set it off to the side to dry and then I started to prep the legs and for the legs, you can see I'm using some Dollar Tree plungers. You guys, you should have seen the way the cashier looked at me when I when I came up with five plungers because I got a couple just in case I did mess up. So yeah, it, it was insane. Even the people that were in line were like, what is this chick doing? So all you have to do is really just unscrew the plunger part off of the wood handle. And then to remove the sticker goo, because usually they always do end up leaving sticker residue, I use Goo Gone, which you can get from Dollar Tree. And it also kind of is its like own little stain in a way. I love this natural wood color that it really brings out. And then I used my miter saw to cut down the legs to 11 inches. And then I used a pencil to just mark five inch spaces where I made a triangle and that's where I'm going to use my hot knife and then I cut out a circle and here I was like oh I'm just gonna eyeball it and then the second one I got a little bit smarter and I was like you know what I'm just gonna trace the actual leg and that worked absolutely perfect I just traced the leg out with my pencil and then I knew the size that I actually needed. Then I went back in with my hot knife and cut those two circles out. If you do not have a hot knife, you could just use a normal knife and heat it up, but I will leave a link down below in the description box to the hot knife that I'm using here. And then I just used some white Rust-Oleum chalk paint to cover up the orange from where the plastic melted. 
Once that paint was dry, I grabbed the wood pieces and I made a little bit of a mark where about an inch and a half down just so that when I placed them down into the bucket, I knew how far to push them and they would all be the same length. For the legs, I did not want them to be straight up and down. I did want them to be kind of angled a little bit, so I set them at a little bit of an angle and once I had them where I liked them, I used my hot glue gun and I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and I add a decent amount of hot glue going around that little wood piece that's peeking into the bucket and I do that on all three of those wood pieces. Dollar Tree has this really pretty jute twine and I believe it's like a cotton twine mix and they do have it in several colors. I love this tan color and all I did was add a little bit of hot glue up here at the top of the handle and then I attached the jute twine to that and it started wrapping it through the handle and then I just wrapped it until that part was completely covered and I did that on both sides on the handles. Now this standing bucket could be perfect for so many different things. You could add a little throw blanket inside of it, you could put your toiletries inside of it, or you could also add some plants to make it more of like a planter. And I do a little bit of a trick where if I don't have enough of the picks that I need, like say once I put them in a bouquet, the bouquet is not big enough and I need it to be a little bit wider and take up more space. So all I do is just start kind of bending the branches outwards on all of the picks that I do have. And then I start taking them and placing them back together into like that bouquet. And it is just so much fuller and really like so much wider and takes up so much more space. So then all I did was place my plants right inside of the bucket and that was it. This DIY is done. One thing I do like about having this as a planter is you can change out the plants or the florals for each season or holiday and I recently found these at Dollar Tree. Yes, the fall stuff is coming out and look how gorgeous these look as well. And like I had mentioned, you could also use it to put a little blanket inside of it also. For this DIY, I'm using two of these longer wood looking signs from Dollar Tree. I've seen them with different shapes as well up at the top so it does not have to be a seahorse because we will be cutting that off. So I just grabbed a piece of wood and used my pencil to make a line as close as I possibly could get to the seahorse because I want as much of the other piece of sign as I can possibly get. And then I use my box knife to score it a few times. And after you've scored it a few times, you can just kind of bend it back and forth and it will kind of snap right off. And if you have any little excess pieces, you can just take your knife and kind of just cut those right off as well. I did the same exact steps on the second sign to remove the seahorse and then I took a piece of sandpaper and just sanded both of those edges down so that they were nice and smooth. To make this a long vertical sign, I'm going to place these two signs together and then I'm going to use these jumbo craft sticks that I got from Walmart and I use some E6000 and hot glue so that they have a really strong permanent hold and I place a decent amount of both of the glues onto the jumbo craft sticks and I just start placing them onto the back of the sign and I do kind of add quite a few of them so that it really is nice and strong and sturdy. Once you have the two signs nice and secured, you can flip it around to the front and you will notice there is a little bit of a gap in the center where you added the two signs together. So all I do is take some Dollar Tree spackling and I fill in that gap so that it is nice and smooth. All you have to do is sand it down and it will look like one long cohesive piece. I want this sign to kind of have a weathered shiplap look to it. So I'm just going to take my chippy brush and this is just a 
bristled paintbrush where the bristles are not all the same length. I know some people do not know what a chippy brush is. I didn't for a long time. So I figured I might, I probably should explain that. So just in case somebody out there doesn't know. So what I do is you've probably seen me do this on my channel before. I turn the brush to the side and then I dip it into the paint, not like saturating the brush, but just a little bit, you know, onto the paintbrush. And then I just make strokes going down, like all the way down whatever sign or painting that I'm painting this shiplap look on. I bought this really nice home stencil from Hobby Lobby for $5.99 and I just place it down onto the sign where I would like it to be, mainly the H and the greenery up at the top. And then I use some painter's tape to just kind of keep that stencil in place. And then I use a Dollar Tree stencil brush, one of the foam stencil brushes, and my black chalk paint. And I just stencil in the greenery piece up at the top as well as the H. Once I had that greenery piece and the H filled in completely, I removed the stencil and I was actually really surprised how crisp and amazing this turned out. So after I did those two, I went ahead and placed on the second piece of the stencil and then I filled that in as well with the black chalk paint using the stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I don't know what is going on, but I just cannot talk right today. I'm so sorry, you guys. I know I'm doing a horrible job at explaining this, but thank God you can see what I'm doing because, yeah, I just cannot talk right today. But anyways, back to the craft. Once you have those three filled in, remove the stencil and look how amazing that turned out. Next, you'll need one of these buckets from the Dollar Tree. I have never seen this gorgeous teal color before ever in any of the Dollar Tree buckets that are metal and I love this color and they also have this beautiful yellow and also kind of like this powdery pink so pretty but this teal is definitely one of my favorite colors so that is the one that I went with on the inside side of these buckets there is like a welded line and what I did was I used that as kind of like my starting point and I took my pencil and went straight across and then straight up so that that was my guide to cut the bucket in half and then I just used a pair of normal scissors to kind of just start cutting it and I found it easiest to cut down one side and then cut down the other and then go down and put your scissors in at the bottom and then cut across at the bottom and if any parts do give you any problems you can use some garden shears or just really any kind of strong scissors will do now that the bucket is cut in half we can go ahead and start trying to attach it to our sign and i use some of the dollar tree jenga blocks and i'm going to add some e6000 and hot glue and then i'm going to turn the sign around so that i can easily place them down inside the bucket but i'm only going to glue this to the sign i'm not gluing the jenga block to the bucket at all i'm actually not gluing the bucket down right now at all I'm just placing the Jenga blocks up against the side of the bucket but gluing it down to the sign. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more of a space for me to glue the bucket to so that it definitely has more of a stronger hold and does not fall off. So as you can see, once I remove the bucket, you now have these two Jenga blocks here and I add some glue onto both sides of the Jenga block and then I place the bucket back down and then I push the sides of the bucket onto the sides of the Jenga block. And then I use one more Jenga block down at the bottom and this one I do glue to the bucket and as well to the sign. Now all you have to do is add your flowers. I hope that didn't sound too complicated, but here is how this DIY turned out. For 
this next DIY, I'm using one of the notorious lovely Hurricane vases from Dollar Tree, and I'm also going to use some of the Rust-Oleum Frosted Glass Spray Paint. Now, of course, you can use as many coats as you would like. I only used two coats of the spray paint on my Hurricane vase, and here's how it turned out. The more coats you add of the spray paint, the less transparent your Hurricane vase is going to be. So most of you know that I am an above knee right leg amputee and let me just say when I found these flexible stencils at Dollar Tree, I literally could have done a one leg cartwheel right there in the aisle. I mean seriously, how gorgeous are these? This one right here stole my heart right away. So I did do this one other time and I tried taping the stencil right onto the vase. However, once I pulled the tape up, it did want to pull the spray paint up. So if you don't spray paint your vase, you can tape the stencil down. Down, but here's how I decided to put the stencil on so that I did not have to actually put the tape onto the vase. So I just took a piece of cling wrap or a saran wrap and I just cut off a square big enough to where I can stretch it around and tape it onto one side of the stencil, stretch it around to the vase and tape it onto the other side. So therefore it's really pulling that stencil down onto the vase so that it's on there nice and tight. And we also don't have to mess the vase up when we pull off the tape. I also put a little piece up here at the top just so that I wouldn't get anything on that area as well. Next I will be using the Alex Flex Flexible Spackle. It is very inexpensive. There's never any cracks. I really love it. You can use the Dollar Tree Lightweight Spackle as well, but with either one of them, I would add some paint, whichever color you would like. I am choosing the White Bear Chalk Paint, and you just wanna add a little bit to the spackle and mix it really well. Okay, so I know this is weird, but you want your spackle to almost look like sour cream. <laughs> I know, right? Weird choice, but that's just what it reminded me of. You want it to be spreadable. See how I'm taking a nice flat brush? I put some of the spackle and paint mixture onto it, and then I'm going to pretty much spread it and drag it across the stencil so that the spackle paint mixture fills in the stencil pretty much on its own, and you have a really nice, flat, smooth look but again, it will be popping out at you once you remove the stencil. And look at this, you guys, look how gorgeous. I was blown away. I decided to only just do the bottom of this vase with the stencil, but you could use the other side of the stencil to do the top. That would also be really pretty as well. I wasn't quite done with the vase just yet. I found this little trinket jar at Dollar Tree. It did originally have a lid, but I lost it somewhere in that mess of a craft room, but I really didn't need it anyways. So I decided I was going to take some of that spackling and paint mixture. I did add a little bit more spackling just so that it had a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to literally paint the entire glass trinket thing, whatever you want to call it. I did the outside and the inside because I was originally just going to do the outside because I'm going to be putting it at the bottom of my vase, but I'm like, I can use the other side, flip it around, and use it as a little trinket jar. I don't know about you guys, but I love a two for one, and here's how this DIY turned out. Recently at Dollar Tree, I found what I'm going to call weaving baskets. However, on the tag, it does say weaving straw plate three assorted. You do have to buy them individually, and I do believe they have other styles as well. They kind of remind me of the seagrass baskets, which are always really nice. For my little baskets, I wanted to add a little bit of extra style and some extra cuteness. So I removed the tag, and then I'm going to add some leather strap handles by using the Dollar Tree faux leather. Now I think for $1.25, the faux leather from Dollar Tree is a really nice deal. They have several different colors, black, white, 
brown and navy blue. For this basket, I'm going to use the black and I'm just taking the one end and folding it over to the thickness that I would like the leather strap to be. And I make sure that I crease it really, really well so that I can take my hot glue gun, add some hot glue, really nice amount into that crease, and then you're going to smooth it out so that hot glue really flattens out and you don't have a bunch of lumps like you can get with using the leather. If the leather's not glued completely and you have some open on the edge, I just took my hot glue gun, added some more hot glue close to the end, and then again, pressed it down, flattening out so it's nice and smooth. If you're worried about burning yourself with the hot glue, use one of the Dollar Tree silicone makeup brushes to smash it down. They work perfectly. Next, I wanted to cut out that strip, so I just took my scissors and simply cut as straight as I possibly could. The dimensions for the Dollar Tree faux leather is 12 by 20 inches, so therefore there's a shorter end and a longer end. If you use the shorter end to make your leather strap, once you cut it out, you can fold it in half cut it in half and you have the perfect size leather strap handles. The reason why I folded the leather over in the first place is because I wanted you to be able to see the black leather on both sides of the straps. To attach my leather strap handles, I will be using a combination of these jot push pins, which kind of have a half bead on the end of them, as well as a little bit of hot glue for some immediate and strong hold. I like the leather straps two different ways, one where the leather straps are facing outward and then one where they're facing upward, which for this DIY I chose the upward style, but you can of course choose however you would like. When adding the push pins, make sure you don't push it in between the material and you actually push it right into the center of the woven material on the basket. I then added some hot glue just to make sure that it held really nice and secure. I told you guys this was going to be a quick and easy DIY, or maybe I just said easy, but it is definitely quick as well. Now I'm just going to take the leather strap and place it back how I would like my handle to be, add some hot glue, which I did first this time, and then adding the push pin to give it a really nice high-end look. Once you have the first side done, of course you're going to move on to the next side, which I just took the leather strap placed it where I would like it and how I would like it to be. Then I add some hot glue to keep it in place while I added the push pins. I am absolutely obsessed with how you can do it such a little touch to something and make it look so much more expensive and so much more high end. Like I had said previously, I added the leather strap handles to all three of my baskets, but for the gray one here, I love the color of this by the way, I did do something a little bit different and I also used the white Dollar Tree vinyl instead of the black. Now I'm not going to make you guys watch me make the leather strap because it is repetitive, so you're going to make the white leather strap just like I did with the black vinyl, and then again cut it in half so you have two pieces that are the same size. Now using the jot push pins, I decided I did not want them to be this gold color, so I took my black chalk paint and I went ahead and painted four of those jot push pins with the black chalk paint. Now I add my leather straps just like I did with the black one, placing them where I would like them, gluing them down, and then adding the push pins. Out of all three of the baskets that I made, I definitely think this one is my favorite. I love the gray, white, and black combination. For the little dark tan basket, I used the brown faux leather and then I used the black push pins that I had painted. I love how all three of them turned out and I would love to know which one is your favorite down in the comments. Not only do I love the look and the style of these baskets, but I also love the fact that I can style them and use them as home decor in so many different ways. For this DIY, I'm using one of the Dollar Tree pool noodles and you could use whatever color you would like. The color does not matter. So all I do is take a box knife and I make a long slit going all the way down 
one side of the pool noodle and then I turn it over and do another one on the other side so that I can split the pool noodle in half and I have two equal parts. I don't know if you guys have seen these crazy trending bubble vases yet but the prices are absolutely insane. $70? No way. So I figured I would make my own. I found this Dollar Tree bucket a while back and it did was it well it was galvanized and just looked all galvanized and had the letter H on it but I did paint it for a different project so all I'm going to do is use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks again and I use my low temp heat setting on my glue gun and I add the hot glue onto the pool noodle then I just start wrapping the pool noodle around the galvanized tin as I am adding hot glue and I just keep adding more hot glue and wrapping as I go and then once I get all the way around to the back I use my box cutter to just kind of cut the excess away and then glue that down as well. I do want to mention that you do not have to paint your bucket you can leave it its normal color because you really will not see any of that anyways because you're wrapping it in pool noodle and we are also going to paint it. For the most part, when you're wrapping the pool noodle, it fits together perfectly, but if you would like to have it like super perfect, you can cut off little pieces with a box cutter or a knife and then just add some more hot glue and make sure that those ends also adhere together when you're gluing it down. I usually use like a little piece of tape and kind of place it on one end and then pull it over and place it on the other side and that will kind of hold it in place until the glue dries. Then I take another piece of the pool noodle and I do the exact same thing, gluing it down to the tin, but I do recommend when you glue it down, make sure that your starting and ending point is at the same spot as you did the previous pool noodle. See how like my, well there, now you can see it, my ends are basically at the same spot on the tin. For the third ring, I do it a little bit different than I did the previous two rings. I only add a hot glue onto one side of the pool noodle and then I place it onto the tin bucket and again where my starting point was on the rest of the pool noodle pieces is where I started this ring as well. And then I just went ahead and added a bunch of hot glue onto the tin itself and then started twisting the pool noodle around until it was formed into a circle. And then just like with the previous two, add a nice amount of hot glue so that those pool noodles really adhere together and then take a piece of tape so that you can keep those pool noodles together until the glue dries. Look how cool this is turning out. I really actually am enjoying this style and this DIY so much. And now I'm just taking that Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white and a little bit of baking soda and I give this a nice full coat completely covering the entire bubble vase. You do not have to paint the entire inside of the vase but I do recommend just at least painting the pool noodle that you can see. Now I want my vase to have some really nice texture to it so I'm adding some of the sand from Dollar Tree and it does not matter what color sand you use the paint will just go ahead and cover that right up and it will be whatever color your paint is. So I add as much as I would like again it is just personal preference on how thick and how much texture I guess that you would like. Now all you have to do is start painting that right onto the vase and you just really just slap it on there and then kind of spread it around. That's kind of the easiest way I found to do it. And you guys, this is really so much fun and actually kind of satisfying to do. And all you again have to do is cover the vase and you guys, I am obsessed with how this turned out. So I also got some greeneries from Dollar Tree. These are absolutely gorgeous, these artificial ferns. I love them so much. And I just wanted to show you guys that I like to kind of take my plants or picks and I will mix them up. This is a pick that I got off from Walmart and it is just a dogwood bush and it was a little bit over $3 so you definitely can't beat that. And again, just like with my other picks, I like to kind of take the branches and spread them out just so that they kind of take up a little bit more space and are a lot fuller in my eyes at least. And then again, you just put those all together, place them inside of your vase. 
I'm obsessed, like literally obsessed. These are so expensive online and we made ours for $2.50. Like that is so gorgeous and it goes with all of our other DIYs. This DIY is definitely one of my favorites. I absolutely love the final look. Now this home sign is not from Dollar Tree, it is from Family Dollar. It was $3, but they do have smaller ones at Dollar Tree and they also have different words as well. Now for this DIY, I do want texture, but not as much texture as if I were using the spackling. So I'm using my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and then adding a little bit of baking soda to it to give it some of that texture and make it a little bit thicker. If you want more texture, you can add more baking soda, or you could always add the spackling to it as well. Once I had my paint and baking soda mixed up really well, I'm going to take the homeward and I'm going to paint the entire thing. Now, I know we're going to be covering up pretty much the bottom half, but just in case anything is kind of see-through or you can see behind it. You want everything to be really nice and cohesive so therefore you don't have white on top and then you can kind of see through the bottom and see that plain wood. So you want to make sure that you paint the entire home word. Once it is completely painted and completely dry, look at that texture. I don't know about you guys, but I am a texture person to the T and I just love this DIY. Now, as if that wasn't enough texture, we are going to be adding a whole bunch of texture with some Dollar Tree moss. I do want to mention that this is the Dollar Tree floral moss, not the Spanish moss or reindeer moss. Oh goodness, y'all, I'm already not looking forward to how many times I'm going to have to say moss in this DIY. So what you're going to do is take the moss and you're going to put it between your hands and start rubbing them together so that it really breaks that moss down into a really fine, gosh, I'm trying to think of something other than the word moss. Don't worry about getting any of the green on your hands. It does wipe right off or you could also use gloves if you would like. Now I'm taking the word home and some painter's tape and I'm going to place the painter's tape not quite center but a little bit above the center. You could add your painter's tape higher or lower if you would like. This is just where I personally liked mine. And like I had previously mentioned, we are going to be covering that bottom half. So keep that in mind. Now that my painter's tape is where I would like it to be, I make sure that my floral moss is right beside me, ready to go. And then I'm going to take a small brush and some Mod Podge. I do a small section at first, placing the Mod Podge on the letter H right underneath the painter's tape. And again, I do a small section because I was not sure how this was actually going to turn out and, or if I even was going to like it. But once I had seen that it was working very well and I could really kind of envision the final product, I was super excited and I was able to kind of start doing bigger sections with the Mod Podge and then adding the moss on top. I did notice that when adding the Mod Podge, you want to do a nice thick amount. You don't want to really smooth it out and like as if you were decoupaging, you want to have a nice good bit on there. You don't want it dripping down the sides, but you want to be able to kind of smash that moss down into the glue so that it really sticks. Once I had the bottom completely covered, I did decide that I wanted to add a second coat to really fill that completely in. So I took a chippy brush and dipped it into the Mod Podge and started pouncing it all over the moss that is already on the word. And then I just add some more moss on top of that so that we have a nice second coat. Then once my second coat is completely done, I take the word and kind of shake off the excess, make sure I don't have any missing spots. And you want to take your finger or a paintbrush and make sure you get down in those grooves between each letter. And you guys watch this. I was so amazed how crisp that line is. Oh, I love this DIY so much. Sorry, you guys. I, you know I get excited about my projects. Come on now. Look how cute. Okay, back to the project. To prevent any shedding, you could use any type of clear coat. I used this Bare Chalk Clear Matte Spray Paint.
Next DIY, I'm going to be using these three metal candlestick holders from Dollar Tree. They are three different sizes and I decided instead of to keep them black, I wanted to spray paint them with the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. So the tops of the candlestick holders have a few spots where the paint is missing because I was not recording and accidentally glued the tops before I hit record, so I apologize, but we will be just completely covering that with these beautiful glass pieces that I found at Dollar Tree. I love the color of these, but one thing I do love even more is this beautiful textured look. They are so pretty. I want to make these beautiful glass pieces into these really pretty, almost like lanterns. So I'm going to take each one of the candlestick holders and glue it to the bottom of the glass piece. I find it doing it that way, it just makes it so that you can see the bottom of the glass piece better and you will get it a little bit more right in the center. And again, you're going to do this to all three of the glass pieces. For the tops of these lanterns, I'm going to be using these LED hanging lamps from Dollar Tree. They have these LED lights inside of this plastic bulb. They do have these metal hangers up here at the top. They're a little difficult to get out, but if you use your scissors and just turn your scissors, it will kind of pop that metal piece right out and you can remove it. Then I removed each one of the bulbs. They are plastic. You can just unscrew them and I wrapped the fairy lights around my finger so that I can push them up inside where the light bulb was. And then I will be adding a little piece of painter's tape and this is going to protect the lights from any kind of paint. You will repeat this step again with all three of the hanging lamps. Again, to paint mine, I used the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint Spray Paint, super quick and easy. Once it dried, I placed them on top of the glass pieces, and I think these are so stinking cute. Before I move on to the next project, when I was making the tops to those three little lanterns, it gave me a really good idea for one of the previous DIYs that I had just done. So all I did was take another one of those light up tops. I used the spackling and paint mixture. I painted the outside and the underside of the tops. Then once it was completely dry, I placed it on top of the frosted glass that I used the stencil with and it turned it into the most beautiful lantern. I am so in love. For this DIY you will need as many of the dogwood or cherry blossom picks from Dollar Tree as you would like. I would definitely say the more the better though, so use as many as you can. Now I'm just taking the picks one at a time and I'm just bending out the branches on each one of them so that they have more of a natural tree branch look. This will also make your tree stand up taller and be wider as well. And again, you will do this to all of your picks and I used 10 of these Dollar Tree picks for my tree. Next, you're going to simply take all of the picks one at a time and place them in your hand and you're going to kind of stagger them as you go, making some of them longer and some of them shorter. You will kind of see here if you look down by the bottom of each of the picks on the stems, you see how some of them are longer and some of them are shorter. I wanted this to look like it had a natural tree trunk at least as much as possible, so I'm going to use some of the floral tape from Dollar Tree and I place it up at the top of the trunks on the picks and I'm just going to wrap it around the picks very, very tightly so that once I have it completely wrapped, it will look like one big tree trunk and it will all be one piece. Once you have the trunk completely wrapped with the floral tape, it will look like this and you can leave it like this if you would like, but of course I have to be like really picky. So I just mixed up some paint and I just made it look 
as close as I can to the stems that are already on the floral picks so that it blended in and really looked like the tree trunk. For the flower pot, I just used a flower pot that I had on hand, but I wanted to change up the color because I have a lot of this moss green color in my spring decor. So again, I just mixed up a color that I like and just painted the entire flower pot with that moss color. Once you have it completely painted, it will look like this and look at that moss color. I absolutely love it. I do want to give it a little bit more dimension, so I'm using a chippy brush from the Dollar Tree and my chalk paint in the color Castle, and I do a nice heavy dry brushing across the entire flower pot until I like how it turned out. Dollar Tree is carrying this absolutely beautiful lace ribbon. They have it in a few different styles, and I just cut off a piece, add a little dab of hot glue to the top of my pot, and then I just wrap it around the top of the pot and I hot glue it into place. Now I'm just going to place a piece of the Dollar Tree of Floral Foam right down inside the pot and this actually fit right in here perfectly. Now you can take your tree and simply push it right down into the floral foam that is inside your pot. And then to add a little bit more weight to this, I use some of the Dollar Tree little white pebbles and pour it right into the top of the flower pot. At this point, you could wrap the tree with fairy lights if you would like. I didn't show that because I figured you guys knew how to do that, but look how gorgeous and how cute this DIY turned out. Again, just like the others, I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. It stands at almost four feet tall and it is absolutely gorgeous. And I do apologize about the shakiness of the camera. Some of you do know that I am an above knee amputee, so it's a little bit hard to stand up and get these good shots for you guys. And um, hello, do you guys see how absolutely stunning this tree is if you have those fairy lights on? For this DIY, I'll be using one of the clear garden dishes from Dollar Tree along with one of their macrame, macrame, misty, you've done lost your mind. No, it is a terracotta pot and this did come in a two pack since it is the larger size. You will want to remove the stickers from the garden dish, especially because this circle here is completely center. So it is going to help us get our terracotta pot on there completely center. So I'm going to use again some E6000 and a combination of hot glue and then where the hole is on the terracotta pot, I'm going to line that little circle that is on the dish with that hole and it is completely centered. Now originally I was going to go for a different textured look for this project, but I decided actually to go against that a little bit later on. But I did start out with spray painting it with this bare chalk linen white spray paint. And then on top of that, I spray painted the Krylon Natural Stone Granite Spray Paint. Now don't get me wrong, I do think this is beautiful, so don't hate me for covering it up, but I did want this project to match a little bit more with the rest of the projects in the video. I have been decorating my home with them. This actually is in my kitchen right now. This video I've been working on for quite a while. So now I actually have it in my kitchen and it has been in there for a good month or so. And I really have loved decorating my home with a lot of the projects that I have made. So if you guys like that granite look, I wanted to show you the paints that I used for that. But if you would like to go for the textured look, I did just go ahead and add some of the spackling, the paint, and the baking soda mixture all over the entire piece. Now all I did was set it aside to dry and before I show you the final look, I wanted to show you guys an option that you can use for bowl filler. Yes, I am talking cat toys. These are perfect. People pay a crazy amount for bowl filler that looks just like these. Well, yes, there's bells in them, but easily pull the bamboo apart and the bell will fall out. Cut off the tag, spray paint them whatever color you would like. You could add a bunch to a bowl or add them to other bowl filler and they are gorgeous.
DIY, you will need two of the bicycle wheel wreath forms from Dollar Tree. And I already painted one white, but you're going to want to paint both of them white. You could spray paint them, hand paint them, however you would like. I just simply used my white chalk paint. In the previous DIY, I was talking about some fairy lights and I totally forgot that I used them in this DIY and look how long these are and look how teeny tiny that little battery pack is. Like I said, it could be so easily hidden. I wrapped both of the bicycle wheel wreath forms with the fairy lights and all I did was the outside circle. You could do more if you would like. For the base on this little ferris wheel, I used this piece of wood that is from Dollar Tree. I just had it painted black from a different project and I just used what I had on hand. There's no reason to go buy a new piece when you could just paint one that you already have. And as you can see, I just used my white chalk paint and I painted the entire piece of wood white. At Dollar Tree, usually in the wedding section or the baby shower section, you can find these little white tin buckets and they come three in a pack and I used two of those packs. Then I just take a chibi brush and I believe it was my moss chalk paint and I dry brush across the whole entire tin bucket, leaving some of the white to show through. I did this dry brushing on all of the tin buckets, then I take one of the buckets, add a decent amount of hot glue onto the bottom, and then place it right in the center of that wood base. I recently found this multi-purpose cement adhesive glue from Dollar Tree, and you guys, this stuff is amazing. This is something else I would highly recommend. All you need is a tiny little bit onto your surface, and then I also added some hot glue for the immediate hold. Once I have my glue all on the bicycle wheel wreath form, I'm going to place it right onto that base, making sure that it is also right up against that little bucket that we glued in the center of the base. And Dollar Tree carries these little pink clips, which are amazing for a project like this. Once it is dry, I go ahead and remove the clip and then do the exact same thing to the other side, adding both of the glues and then gluing it to the base, making sure that it is touching and right up against the bucket. You could also add a little bit more hot glue once it is placed onto the base for an extra hold as well. When you buy the little buckets from the Dollar Tree, they already have these little white strings in them. So I went ahead and just used that, tied it to the bucket handle, and then tied it where I would like it to be on the Ferris wheel. Then I just take my hot glue gun and add a dab of hot glue onto the bucket and glue the other side of the ferris wheel to the bucket. And just cut off any of the excess string that you have hanging over. You're just going to repeat the same steps with the rest of the buckets by simply tying the string onto the bucket handle, then tying the string to the ferris wheel. And the reason why the string is not sliding when we just tie it right onto the ferris wheel is because we wrapped it with fairy lights and that is stopping the string from falling down. But say you're doing yours without fairy lights, go ahead and just add a dab of hot glue where you are placing your string and that will keep it nice and in place. And as you can see with some of the buckets, I did use a little bit of hot glue and glue it to some of the spots on the ferris wheel just so that the bucket would stay facing forward and not turn sideways. Once you are done adding all of your buckets and you can do as many or as little as you would like, I just take the battery pack on one side and place it through the bicycle wheel wreath forms so that both of the battery packs were on the same side. Using my hot glue gun, I add a little dab of hot glue onto one of the battery packs and then I glue both of the battery packs together and then I glue the battery packs to the back of the bucket. And do you see what I mean? Look how little that battery pack is. You can definitely hide it right behind that bucket and no one will see it. Using some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss, I just place a little bit into each one of the buckets. Then you could add whatever florals or greenery that you would like and this DIY is done. I added some succulents and my goodness, I am obsessed with this DIY. I absolutely love it and look how gorgeous it is at night with those lights on. This is definitely by far one of my favorite DIYs ever and you can change out the florals for each season or each holiday, which makes it even better. 
Every day I cannot wait until I can turn the lights on at nighttime because it is just so pretty. For this DIY, you'll need two of the half barrel planters at Dollar Tree, and as soon as I saw these, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. So starting off, I used a box cutter to cut a slit into the top of one of the planters, and I actually thought this was going to be a lot harder to cut than it was, and then I realized how easy it actually was. But you're just going to cut a hole into the top of one of the planters. The size of the hole really depends on how many florals you would like to put in the top of the planter. So if you're only using a few, just cut a small hole. And then if you would like a lot, it obviously you would cut a larger hole. Then I use some Dollar Tree floral foam and I just hot glued it to the bottom of the planter covering the hole. Using my hot glue gun, I place a nice amount of hot glue all the way around the edge of one of the planters, and then I take it and place it right on top of the second planter, making it look like one full barrel. And you guys, this is actually cute just as is. If you would like to use it as little side table or something like that, the barrel is just so cute on its own. But to add florals, just simply poke them right down into the floral foam and then I used some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss and simply hot glued some of it along the top of the barrel underneath the florals. If you've been around my channel for any amount of time, you probably know that I love my fairy lights. I add them to so many different things. I love using them. So I just use some Dollar Tree fairy lights and I wrap them all throughout the florals. Since making this video, I found a amazing deal on Amazon for fairy lights. You actually get 32 10 foot 30 LED fairy lights for I believe $29.99. So they are under a dollar and they also have the very, very little teeny tiny battery pack that can be easily hidden. I will definitely link these down below in the description box. Once I had the lights weaved throughout the florals, I simply hot glued the battery pack to the back of the barrel at the top underneath the florals. And this is how this DIY turned out. You guys, I don't know about you, but this is also screaming rustic wedding to me. These would be gorgeous centerpieces or down the aisle. It just totally screams rustic wedding. Also, it is gorgeous home decor. You could change out the flowers if you would like. I absolutely love this DIY. DIY you will need two of the longer hanging shelves from Dollar Tree and one of the two pack of short hanging shelves from Dollar Tree. Using my white chalk paint and just a simple foam brush from the Dollar Tree I go through and I paint all of those wood pieces white. Once I have all four of my wood pieces painted white I add some hot glue to the bottom of one of the shorter shelves and I hot glue it right to the bottom side of one of the longer shelves. Then I did the same exact thing with the other short wood piece and I just glued it right to the side of the long wood piece. And then I just go in with my hot glue gun, add some hot glue to the two shorter pieces and then I place the second longer wood piece right on top. And again, make sure you have everything all nice and straight. You do not have to have a bottom to your box, but for me, I wanted to have a bottom, so I used some of the Dollar Tree foam board, and I just placed my box right on top of it, took a pencil, and traced out the inside of the box. And now I just use my little handy dandy Dollar Tree X-Acto knife. They come with a few different heads. I love this X-Acto knife. It is a crafter's must have. So I just cut out that rectangle and it will slide right down into your box that you have created. And I add some hot glue going around almost like it is caulking it. And I just go all around all four of the sides and hot glue it to the box. Using two of the Dollar Tree wooden spatulas, they don't have to be this exact spatula, but you do want them to have a hole up at the top on the handle. So next I just went in with my white chalk paint and painted both of the spatulas white. Add a decent amount of hot glue on the bottom part of the spatula, which is the wider end, and then you're just going to hot glue it right to the center side of your box. You could use a stronger glue, E6000, whatever you would like. I'm personally using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks, so they stick absolutely 
absolutely amazing and I will have these linked down below in the description box. Then I do the exact same thing with the second spatula. Using these little sticky dots from the Dollar Tree, these are the bigger ones. They do have smaller ones at Dollar Tree as well. I just went in with my black chalk paint and painted a few of those black. These do have a sticky back to them, but to make sure that they last a very long time and that they do not fall off, I just use some of my hot glue and place it onto the back of the little sticky dot. And then I start placing the sticky dots on all of those little holes that are on all four sides of the wood crate. So basically, again, I'm just covering up the four holes on this side, then I move it to the other sides and do the same exact thing. I'm sure most of you have seen these tin buckets from Dollar Tree. Well, I like the flower and garden little image on there. So I use my garden shears, which you guys do not do this. Use normal scissors. Long scissors are great. This actually cuts very, very easily. I mean, go in and try and cut one and you'll see. I made this so much worse on myself by using these short little scissors. I thought that it was going to be really hard to cut, but once I actually switched to my normal scissors, which I used actually some really dull ones because I didn't want to ruin any of my good scissors. And you guys, it, it cuts so easy and I definitely made this harder. So do as I say and not as I do with this part here. And as you can see, it cuts very, very easily with these doll scissors. I cut it down to the size that I would like, and then I use my hot glue gun, and I just add a decent amount onto the back of the little galvanized little sign, and then I add it right to the front center of our flower box. At this point, you could leave the front just as is, but I, of course, have to go one more step further, and I'm using these bamboo sticks that you guys have probably seen me use on my channel before. I have these on my Amazon store. I will have them linked down below. I use these for so many different things, lots of borders. They are absolutely great. I painted a couple with my black chalk paint and then cut them down to size and started hot gluing them around that galvanized metal little square. You could also use the Dollar Tree craft sticks, skewer sticks, dowel rods, whatever you would like to create this border as well. At my Dollar Tree, I was not able to find any of their dowel rods, so I went to Walmart and found this super, super long dowel rod, and I believe it was under a dollar. So all I did was cut it down to the size that I needed and painted it black with my black chalk paint. Once the dowel rod is nice and dry, go ahead and push it right into those two holes that are at the top of your spatulas. And once you finish this step, your wood basket is finished and you can start adding whatever you would like to the inside. I added some Dollar Tree moss and lots of florals. And here's how this DIY turned out. Of course, I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. It is just so cute and it is absolutely huge. I love the size and you could add so many different things inside of your basket. For this DIY, you will need one of the shovel and rake sand toys from Dollar Tree and they do have little screws on them. So if you ever see the glasses like the eyeglass fixing kits from Dollar Tree, definitely grab those up. The little screwdrivers, so handy. Like, I love the little screwdrivers. They work for the battery packs, so many different things. Just simply unscrew all of the pieces so that they are all separate. And then I went in with my white chalk paint and painted every single one of the pieces, both of the tubes, both of the handles, and both of the heads with the white chalk paint. Now you could definitely take the easier route, which I totally would have done, but I did not have any more spray paint and you can definitely spray paint these if you would like. To get the two tubes to look like real wood, I used some antiquing wax and this is the Hello Hobby antiquing wax. Really any antiquing wax will do. And I just use a paper towel, place a generous amount onto the tube and then wipe it down in an up and down motion so that it gets that wood grain look. You could add multiple layers to this to make it darker or add more in some spots and less in other spots to have darker and lighter spots. But as you see, it turns out looking just like wood. To get the faux galvanized metal look, I use this Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint that you can get from Walmart for very, very cheap and a makeup sponge. 
dip the makeup sponge into your gray paint and I usually hold it with the small like skinnier end in my hand and then sponge it on with the thicker side of the makeup sponge. When I'm dabbing the gray paint onto any of the pieces, I dab it on where it is thicker in some spots so it is darker and thinner in other spots. Here's what the shovel will look like once you have the first layer completed. And do you see how you can kind of see the shape of the makeup sponge on there? That is what you really want. Now I do the exact same thing to the rake head, which is sponging on that Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint all over until you have it completely covered. For the two handles, they do have those spots that are kind of hard to reach with the makeup sponge, so I just paint all of the spots that I can reach with the makeup sponge, and then I use a small paintbrush and just dab the paint right into those hard to reach places. For the second coat, you will need a darker gray, and if you do not have a darker gray on hand, you could simply do what I did, and that was just mix the Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint with some of the Dollar Tree chalkboard paint. Using the darker gray paint, you're going to simply pretty much do the same steps over again, but when you add it on to the pieces, you want to make sure you leave a little bit of the previous gray showing through, just like this. And again, for the smaller, hard to reach places on the handles, I just used a paintbrush and dabbed the darker gray paint, just like we did the previous paint. Here's where that galvanized metal really comes to life and I use the Folk Art Metallic Sterling Silver paint and you can get this at Walmart for very, very cheap. And I just use a makeup sponge again and dab that all over each of the pieces, making sure that you can still see some of the gray showing through. You could do as many layers as you would like with this. I only did that one layer and then you just simply reattach all of your pieces by screwing those little screws back into place. This next step was definitely personal preference, but I went back in with the antiquing wax and a paper towel and just rubbed it across some of the galvanized metal pieces to kind of make them look a little bit old or rusted. Again, this is not something that you have to do, but if you would like to, you could do as little or as much distressing as you would like. Then I just take the shovel and the rake and I place them in an X shape. It doesn't matter whether the shovel is on top or the rake is on top. Again, that is just personal preference. And then I use some of the Dollar Tree Jute Twine. This is the twine from the automotive section. And I just tie it around both the shovel and the rake. And then I wrap it around both of I guess both directions quite a few times. Here you'll kind of see what I mean where I just take the twine and just wrap it in one direction and then I go the opposite direction wrapping those two nice and tight so they stay in that shape. Once you're done wrapping them nice and tight and they are no longer moving you're just going to use your hot glue gun and place a little dab of hot glue and cut off the excess. For the florals on this, I found these really cute little blooming branches from Dollar Tree and I just cut them down and then wrapped them with some floral wire so that they were into a little bundle. I also wanted to add some florals and Dollar Tree has really stepped up their florals, but I seen these picks at Walmart for 97 cents and I had to grab a few. And again, I just cut them down and wrapped the centers with floral wire so that they were into little bundles. And then I wrap the two bundles together using some of the Dollar Tree floral wire. So for the florals, I would like to be able to change these out for each season or each holiday. So instead of gluing them down, which you could do that if you would like to keep them right in place, but I just went ahead and used some of that Dollar Tree jute twine and tied them on and wrapped it around a few times. Once it is wrapped a few times, I just cut it down and tie it into a knot again so that I can easily change them out if I would like to. Now all you have to do is add whatever bow you would like and just place it right into the center and I use a pipe cleaner on my bows so that again I could change them out if I would like. And here is how this DIY turned out. You guys, look how absolutely amazing this galvanized metal look is, and that faux wood is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm telling you now, no one is going to know you made these from Dollar Tree Sand Toys.
For this DIY, I'm using two of the Dollar Tree plungers. I already took one of the plunger parts off, but all you have to do is twist that plunger part and it will screw right off. I will also be using a larger dowel rod from Walmart and I'm going to cut three pieces off of this and the size of your pieces depend on how far away you want your sides of your ladder to be, basically how wide you would like your ladder. So you're going to cut three of those pieces off and I just scored it with my miter shears and then bent it in half breaking it. Using my antiquing wax and a paper towel, you could use stain, you could paint this, or you could leave them just as is. I covered mine completely with this antiquing wax, and I did this to all of the pieces, the two plunger pieces, and all three of the little step pieces. Before I glue all my ladder pieces down, I like to place them on to my ladder to see how far away I would like them to be. And then I just grab them one at a time and put them right back on, hot gluing them down. Down at the bottom of our plunger, there is those little ridges where we took off the plunger part, as you can see here. So I just wanted to cover that up. You could leave it if you would like, but I wanted a little bit more of a finished look, and so you wouldn't be able to tell that it was made from plungers. So I just took some of the Dollar Tree Jew Twine and hot glued it to the bottom of the plunger and wrapped it around quite a few times, then hot gluing it into place. And I did this on both sides of the ladder. And of course, I had to go one more step further with the jute twine. So all I did was hot glue it to the back of the ladder where the steps are. And then I wrap it a few times going in one direction. And then I wrap it a few times going in the opposite direction, creating that X look on the ladder steps. I did this to all three of the steps on both sides. I think that looks so cute and it just goes so well. At Dollar Tree, usually in the party section or baby shower slash wedding section, you can find these packs of tin buckets. They're little white tin buckets. They come in a three pack and I used two of those for this ladder and I just add some greenery into one and then some Dollar Tree lavender into the other. To attach these little buckets to the ladder, I'm going to be using this farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree and I just cut off a little piece of it, added it right underneath the handle on the bucket and then I wrap it around the wood part that's on the step and hot glue it into place. I think this is just so cute and I love how the little buckets hang from the ladder. And of course, I did the same thing with the second bucket, wrapping that ribbon right around the step. At this point, I thought I was done with the ladder, but of course, you guys know me and I have to go one more step further. And that is just adding some of the Dollar Tree jute twine to the center of the ribbon that is holding the buckets to the ladder. I just love that two-tone look with the twine and the ribbon. I think it just looks absolutely amazing. And you guys, look how gorgeous this DIY turned out. And as always, I am obsessed with this DIY. I love that you can change out the florals for each season and each holiday. Use a glass vase from the Dollar Tree. It doesn't have to be this exact vase, but you do want it to be glass. You will also need a pack of the laser cutouts from Dollar Tree, and they have so many different ones you can choose from. Crosses, clocks, birds, sea animals. I mean, so many different things. These come with three different styles and you get two of each style, but they are a little bit thick, so you actually can pull them apart so that you get more out of one design and also the pieces will be much thinner. Next, I go in with my paintbrush and add a decent amount of Mod Podge right onto the glass base and you can get Mod Podge at Dollar Tree as well. And as you can see, I did my base in sections. Once you have your Mod Podge onto your vase, grab one of your laser cutouts and place it right onto where you put the Mod Podge. Now take your paintbrush and add another decent amount of Mod Podge on top of the laser cutout. As you are doing this, you will see the laser cutout start to lay down and stick to the glass vase. 
Since this is the first time that I've actually done something like this, I was also learning as I was going, and I realized that if you put the Mod Podge on and let it sit for a few minutes to kind of get tacky, the laser cutout will stick and really adhere and lay down flat pretty much right away, and then you could go over top of it with another layer of Mod Podge. I don't know about you guys, but I love quick and easy DIYs that still turn out absolutely gorgeous, and this is definitely one of them. All you have to do is keep adding those laser cutouts until you have as many as you would like. Let the Mod Podge dry completely and your vase is done. And here's how this beautiful DIY turned out. This is how it looks in the evening with a candle in it and it is so gorgeous and here's how it looks with some light on it. I absolutely love how it is giving those clear stained glass vibes. If you do not know what that looks like, definitely look it up on Google. It looks so close to this. I just love how this came out. And I called this a vase slash candle holder because you could use it as a candle holder or you could put greenery in it and use it as a vase and also add some fairy lights as well. Or you could also do it like I did and just add a little accent piece and let the beauty shine all on its own. Dollar Tree has been carrying so many different new wood pieces and I used six of the 23 inch wood pieces and two of the 12 inch wood pieces. I do want to let you guys know that you can save some money on this DIY if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's for the wood or even another hardware store, but I don't really have one close by and I wanted to try and keep this mostly, well, all Dollar Tree actually. So I used the Dollar Tree at wood, but of course you could use any wood you would like. I lined the six 23 inch wood pieces together and then I took some wood glue and hot glue which I also got the wood glue from Dollar Tree and I just placed the 12 inch piece of wood onto the side of the longer boards. When I placed mine down I left a tiny little bit of the longer boards peeking out from the side so that it wasn't completely even with the longer boards. Then I just went in and did the same exact thing with the second 12 inch wood piece and I placed the wood glue and hot glue onto the wood piece and then placed it down at the other end of the longer wood pieces. Okay, so I know I cannot be the only one who does this, but you know those Dollar Tree foam paintbrushes? Well, when they are no longer useful, I don't throw the whole thing away. I take off the head part, it kind of just pulls right out, and I keep the wooden piece for a wooden dowel rod. I mean, it is perfect. I use them all the time. So then I take some wood glue and hot glue, and I glue two of those together, and I do that two times. So then you will have two of these longer dowel rod pieces. Using another wood paintbrush and I use my scissors and just start scoring as I kind of twist it around until it breaks apart. You can cut these however you would like. They cut fairly easily and I make four one inch wood pieces and I sand each one as I go. Using my black chalk paint, I paint both of the longer wooden dowel rod pieces, and then I also paint all four of the little one inch wood pieces. For the main part of the tray, I knew I wanted to stain that, but I have a little one in the house. She is two, and I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I have her all throughout the day. So she's home all the time as I'm crafting. Most of the time she's napping, but still, I don't like to use chemicals in the house. So here is a faux stain technique that is absolutely amazing. All you have to do is add a little bit of paint, a few drops into some water, and you could use whatever color you would like. I used the apple apple barrel burnt umber and then I used my paintbrush to stir it that I painted the black handles with so that it was just a tad bit darker. Then all you have to do is start placing it right on to your board. You can wipe it off after you place it on, but I just left mine right how it is. And you guys look at that wood grain coming out. I absolutely love this stain technique. No one has ever known that it was just paint and water instead of actual stain on any of my projects. And if you look up in the right hand corner and down at the bottom, as I'm putting this on, you literally can see this drying and this is not sped up at all. 
I mean, it dries literally within seconds. And like I said, there's no icky chemicals, no smells, no dry time. I mean, I just love this technique. And honestly, I don't think I've used real stain since. Once you have your board completely faux stained, don't forget to get the sides. You definitely want to get those as well. You're going to start building the handles or while well, putting them together. And all I did was take the smaller wood pieces, add some hot glue and some E6000. You could use whatever glues you would like. And I just take the little wood piece and place it about an inch from the edge on the longer black wood piece. You're just going to do the same thing with the other wood pieces and that is gluing the little one inch pieces on each end of the black longer dowel rods about an inch from the edge. And then you will have two of these modern looking handles. When it comes to putting the tray together, you could technically take some screws and place it up the bottom of the tray and into the handles and actually pick the tray up by the handles. But mine is more of a decorative piece. So I use some hot glue and wood glue and I just glue both of those handles to the center part of the 12 inch wood pieces on either side of the tray. And here's how this absolutely stunning modern wood tray turned out. If you would like, you could add a spray sealer or even place a Mod Podge over it, but I just kind of left it just as is because it really won't be messed with too much. And I think it is just absolutely stunning and I love dressing it up in different ways. And yes, like I said, you could make it cheaper with other wood, but this was only $11.25 to make. The next DIY is this nature wreath, and this went viral on TikTok pretty much as soon as I posted it, so I knew I had to come on here and show you guys as well. Using a foam wreath form from the Dollar Tree and one bag of their potpourri, I've seen it purple, green, red, and a tan color. And you also get these little decorative balls in there. I just take these out and actually place them in a vase and use them as decorative balls. And you also get these little flowers. I believe you only get one, but it is super cute. I will also be using one bag of floral moss from the Dollar Tree. Using my hot glue gun, I start adding hot glue in sections onto my foam wreath form and then I put my moss into a bucket so that I could just dip the wreath right into the bucket and kind of cover that section with the moss. And you can see me using a Dollar Tree silicone makeup brush to push that moss right into the wreath form so that I don't burn my fingers. By the way, whoever came up with that is a pure genius. Just keep adding hot glue and then covering it with the floral moss until you have your wreath completely covered. Once you have your wreath covered, and it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, we are going to be covering most of this up anyways. We just need it in case we have little spots that peek through. You don't want to see that ugly foam wreath form underneath. So then I just take the potpourri pieces and I just start hot gluing them right to the wreath. And I did not do this in any certain direction. I just tried making sure there wasn't a bunch of the same colors next to each other. And you just keep filling it up until you have your wreath completely covered. You could add a bow or whatever you would like to this, but I absolutely love the natural beauty, so I left it just as is. And another little hack is if you have a project where you can get a lot of those little hot glue strands, use a blow dryer or heat gun and those will melt and disappear right away. And here's a look at how this DIY turned out. This wreath is so gorgeous. I am loving that purple and let me tell you, my house smells absolutely amazing. The purple bag is the lavender scent and I've had my wreath up for a little over two weeks now and I can still smell it all the way throughout the house. You don't even have to be in the same room. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you would like to see more of my DIY home decor projects. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!